himself. He had a great showing at MLG, was the farthest advancing foreigner, or non-Korean rather. And you know, he was saying, I'm still not happy, I'm still not satisfied. If I, even if I play better than all my peers, if I don't win, I'm still a loser. And that's the kind of mentality that Naniwa carries. So, uh, who would you give this match to? I don't know, man. Historically, Naniwa's always struggled against Zerg, especially European Zerg. He seems like he can hold his own. Naniwa had an amazing series against Donregu in the GSL a couple seasons ago. Can he kind of regain that form? It seems like what version of Naniwa will show up? How is he going to present himself in a best of three? And Nurchio, I mean, this guy, he's, he's, he's always said that he's traveled a little bit poorly, but we've seen him make epic loser bracket runs. We'll start things off, guys, here at IPL5 between Nurchio and Naniwa. Who will advance? One enters. Only one will go through. IPL 5. Welcome to IPL 5 Daybreak. Ladies and gentlemen, in the top right-hand corner of the map, from Team Acer, hoping he can pull out the victory, it is the Zerg player, Acer Nurcio, who almost just got a probe kill. Yeah, it's always one of those things that's, uh, probe is one of the biggest teases in the world. He's looking very relaxed right now. His opponent, guys, in the bottom left-hand corner, going to be bringing out all the stops here. In the blue, it is... Yeah. Bionix Naniwa. Map is Daybreak. Look at that, Naniwa concentration level gamer. It's, uh, it's, it's Daybreak, a map that's historically been very figured out, and it's really... Really cool to see that Naniwa has been able to evolve his play, like we said. Uh, but I want to see what Naniwa is going to be able to bring to this tournament because, you know, some tournaments it seems like he, he's going to make that great run. When it's that giant open bracket in MLG, that's when Naniwa first got his name, right? When he went yeah. to MLG and just won it. Yep. But then there's also tournaments where he goes to the group stages where it just seems like Naniwa is it, it can't really do what he wants to. His, his plans get uh, completely destroyed. He's not able to micro as well. And, Naniwa gets into you know this 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 discomfort zone where he doesn't seem like he can come back in any scenario. Now Naniwa has a really solid playstyle usually, you know, even dating back to when Protosses weren't forge fast expanding. He was going for like a robo based expand, you know, yep. push with Immortal Sentry uh, off of two bases, a little bit more delayed. Uh, but what, what can we really be expecting from this series, Kibbles? Because I know I, you've been studying them a lot. Well, you know, I'm just, I'm really excited for Naniwa. Um, I, earlier, you know, I, I mentioned the comment, eh, Naniwa's been on the down lately. Um, but you mentioned it beautifully, Fernand, that, you know, he's down because he's reconstructing himself. Uh, take a player, you know, for instance, who maybe just decided to remap every single hotkey because they realized they could do it more efficiently. Well, their play style's really gonna suffer for a while, you know? It's gonna take a while before they can get used to the new layout. But once they do, they may strike back even stronger than before. Will that be Naniwa at this event? You know, off to a rough start, okay, but now he's got a chance here to show versus Nurchio. And uh, Nurchio off to a nice start, picking off that probe. Although uh, the probe knew what he was getting into, man. He, uh, he was asking for trouble. Scout. <laughs> Scouting. That's right. How dare he look for information? It's the worst profession to have as a probe. There's a lot of pro types of probes. You know, there's, there's worker probes, there's builder probes, there's mining probes, there's suicide probes. That's right. Uh, all of them are special in their own way. I guess there's military probes, too. When you, <laughs> like, well, that's mostly uh, the SCV Then there's stuff. the Huck probe, Third man. Board. Where's the Huck probe? The hero probe. The one that used to go around harassing all the time. It's actually pinching, one probe. Pinching queens in the butt. It, it, was, it used to be one of the most endearing things to see. The Buck probe. Yeah, it was the, it was the hero probe, as we all said. Back, that oh, was yeah. back a long time ago, though, as uh, Huck, of course, fighting for his life in IPL5. Yeah. We see a quick robo out of Naniwa, the first choice of gas from this, uh, from this Potos player. We do see that Nurchio is going for pretty standard. Nurchio is very capable of playing powerful macro styles, but he's also capable of doing, you know, uh, 
all kinds of stuff. He can play Muta in, the, in composition. He can play the Roach-based composition. He can play Ling and Fester. Uh, but it seems like he's going to go for pretty standard timings. Around 6.30, 6.40, he's going to drop his Roach Warren and Evo Chamber. This is like the standard ZVP build. Yeah, um, and you know, on the other hand, from Naniwa, we're seeing the Robo into two gases. So uh, a lot of options available to him right now. And by a lot, I mean really two. Uh, <laughs> He's throwing down three gateways. I mean, this could be another Immortal Sentry play. I'm going to be waiting to see the Twilight Counts. I really felt like he would be expanding here, but uh, Warp Prism on the way. Things are getting a little bit finicky, um, and it looks like uh, it's going to be instead a yeah, second Sentry on the way. This is a little bit back to Hero again, as we're going to see a um, uh, uh, excuse me, Sentry Zealot drop play. Yep, even getting a quick plus one to deal with any early Zerglings yep. as Nurcio is taking up the lair, getting his gases. Now, he hasn't committed to roaches. That's actually the fun part, because you don't necessarily have to make roaches. This was like a, a big revelation to some Zergs about six, seven months ago. He was like, you know, I actually don't have to make any to wow. be safe. And then I could just use my, t my gas to detect something else, just have it for security base. And that's what Nurtio is doing. He's being very, very minimalist as possible. And yeah, I, I, you know what? To highlight or expand on that, very safe, Dan. Um, he has dropped a spore crawler in his, at his third base. He is um, ah. also, I saw two in production, I'm looking for the second one, but regardless, I mean, he's making spore crawlers, he has that roach worm, but has not made any roaches, so he is just making sure he's got all his bases covered because he does not know what to expect out of Naniwa right now, and it looks like it is uh, going to be, well, the zealots are already warped in, and here comes the pressure, Twilight Council going down behind this, so expect Naniwa to expand, but uh, we'll see what damage he can get done here versus Acer's Nurtio. So let's do that plus one. That's going to make it very difficult for Nurtio to engage. He doesn't have a spine crawler really to uh, bait off the pressure. He has played this very minimalist. Oh, look at this. Trying to reposition the spore crawler. So that way the war prism can't get into good position. But Naniwa does deal with the queen. Two sentries able to force with him block the ramp. Nurtio made a few roaches, but there's really not much to deal with. Oh. The results in time. Force field is also trapping some of the units. Actually, none of the units. Yeah, that was Never just a little bit botched force fields. Oh, but he's going to try to target down the hatchery. This could be a big snipe. And the Zelts are not going down quick enough. And Naniwa does manage to deal with the third hatchery. Big plays from our Swedish Protoss. Oh, absolutely. I'm not Ooh. Oh, man. Wow, down to just nine hit points with two sentries inside. Naniwa's going to get just out of there. And he did catastrophic damage to Nurtio. Uh, taking a look at the workers killed, though, he didn't break into that too much. Only one at this time. But he take, took out that hatchery, delayed a ton of mining time, and killed about an equal number of units, I do believe. Yeah, he'll, he's only about 100 minerals behind. Yeah, he killed off the queen, killed off some drones, forced a lot of roaches, as well as, you know, killed the hatchery. So that, those things stack multiplicatively. Yes. Yes. Nice. And it allows Naniwal to use that multiplication for his benefit. Ooh. Boom. That was, that was some insane logic and vocabulary, Dan. Yeah, that's right. I mean, I agreed to have told me to practice more math, so I, I, I tried saying words that I shouldn't. <laughs> Nurtio, he's gonna try to double expand while getting his Infestor tech out. This is, this is of course a, a nice little way to slowly pressure with the roaches, but really, realistically, you're just trying to get farther ahead based off how much you lost early on. Naniwa, looking like he wants to set up for a strong three base, but one thing that you pointed out, Kimball, that I love, is that Nurtio still has a good drone count. It's not like he lost too much there. Yeah, he's sitting at 74 actually, which is just massive. Uh, he's also grabbing, and this is basically a double expand behind this, I mean, he reestablishes third, he also jumped up to this fourth base, which is three quarters of the way done right now, and we still have Naniwa, who's on two bases. That creep is really, really slowing him down right now, and uh, this is very nice for Nurtio. I mean, Naniwa has to answer this, actually. He needs to push across the map, and it looks like he's going to uh. be doing just that. Um, he hasn't scouted the fourth, but this is a very intelligent and necessary play. Yeah, this is uh, you know, an interesting moment to push out because Naniwa does plan to expand. In fact, yes, he dropped the Nexus anyways, uh, but he's just going to slowly pressure. This is a very off-timed moment for Zerg. They're not very comfortable with this because they don't have a big amount of units. They don't have a big Infestor count. They do have Infestor tech, but it's not like they have a great amount of upgrades. Naniwa splitting his units, making sure not to get caught too much out of position and get fungled. And all he has to do is try to bait out some energy, do this very nicely, and don't get caught. Yep, and his, his sentry micro right now is immaculate. He went forward with just one sentry that had a lot of energy, so that if a fungal was blown on it, it wasn't going to, you know, catch all of his sentries. But here's the thing. He did not see that fourth base. He saw a spore crawler. That's you know, pretty indicative. But, um, I mean, he's only got a third right now. So, in, in, in 
response to this, I'd love to see a fast fourth out of Naniwa as well. Yeah, I mean, he doesn't know, so he can't really react to that. He has to play with the information he has, which he saw Roach and Fester, and saw, you know, some Zerglings, really. So he says, okay, well, you know, he's, ca he's channeling all of his gas to major layer tech right now, not necessarily gearing up for a heavy hive switch. You know, some Zergs play super duper greedy and try to go for a quick hive. That's not the case in this scenario. Now we finally see the Hive going down at the same time as the Spire, so about 14 minutes. That's just going to give Naniwa a comfortable two-minute window where he might be able to do something, but Naniwa is playing this very passive because he's going for his third base. So these things all indicate for Nurture to be in a really good position, especially since he has eight gases. Yeah, you know, that it's going to allow him to do so much here, Dan. I mean, the Hive, the Spire, the upgrades as well. Nurture is going to have basically a little party over here on the east side of Daybreak, whereas Naniwa is kind of, you know, He's really in the dark right now. Uh, he needs more information. He needs to find out what's going on on that other side of the field. And well, it looks uh, like he's going to move out. But yeah. this is a tough timing for him. This is what we're talking about. You know, you don't necessarily have to capitalize on all of your third base. You're going to push around two and a half. And uh, Naniwa knows, you know, this is a good time to strike. That window is still a, a little bit open here for Naniwa. Yeah. If he can make something happen here, Kibbles. I thought there were a lot more spore crawlers. In fact, they had just been relocating. They were just translucent. So only three spores here. Or, excuse me, spine crawl. It's for Nurchio, so he's going to be splitting his forces. Uh-oh, will force fields go down on the ramp? No, in fact, the fungal growth trapping a lot of the stalkers right now. Blinking for targeting down the high energy investors. Beautiful control out of Naniwa right now. Force fields trapping. Look at these roaches all trapped up. A beautiful donut there, and Naniwa is devastating the roach count right now for Nurchio, and he's killed off a lot of investors, Dan. Great blinks from Naniwa, but his job is not done yet. Spine crawler and investor can lock down positions. Look at how much damage the Zelts are doing in the Main base. Nurtio has lost a lot of his economy. Now Nurtio is going to make another big stand. Nani wants a lot of weak stalkers. A couple fungals can change the outcome drastically. Nani wants still staying up in supply, but it is also dropping quickly. The Immortals finally have dropped too. Uh, but the Investor count is dwindling slowly as Naniwa trying to go in for some warp ins with another warp prism. But the reinforcements oh. from Naniwa might be enough. And he's cleaning up so many of his Investors. He cleaned up every Investor, Dan. There's one left on the entire map right now, and it is out of energy as well. Naniwa with a fantastic engagement there. Yes, he may look to be down in supply, but he killed off all the high value units, and behind it, he actually has six more workers than Nurchio right now. Mm, but I feel like Nurchio is still, I mean, he weathered the, the hardest part of ZVP mid game. You know, <laughs> when his hive is going up, he's getting all of his, uh, his tech out. The big thing is that he did lose his investors, like you said, Kibbles, but he's still on four base so comfortably, he didn't even lose all of his spine crawlers, so he doesn't even have to overcommit too many, too, too many drones anymore. Uh, Naniwa a little bit oversaturated right now at his third as well. He's not mining, he has not mined a single Vespine off of either geyser. Uh, so probably a relatively large blunder there out of Naniwa, in fact. But he's grabbing his fourth base, he's throwing down some cannons, and he's going to get up to that very powerful four-base Protoss play. Oh yeah, four-base Protoss, you can get your Mothership out, you can get Archons, you can still warp in non-stop Stalkers. It's just that explosion of economy, because by the time you get to the fourth base, you're pretty much on three-base economy anyways. Uh, this Warp Prism trying to get into a nice little nook, but Nurtio won't let that happen, trying to protect his greater Spire, just needs a little bit more time. And uh, Naniwa, of course, we all know that he wants more time too, so both players giving each other what they want. Yeah, um, and it, you know, it's a little tough to out macro a Zerg player, so we're seeing all of the money for Nurtio being dumped, but still, Naniwa ahead in probe, 70 to 64 right now. So, uh, and he has started mining off uh, of the gases in his third, so he just needs to play a nice defensive game. I would really, I <laughs> can't even emphasize this enough, he needs to clean up this creep in the middle. Uh, in the lane, you know, the creep's really pushing down the lane, and there's nothing here, like the rocks are still there. So kill off those tumors, make sure it can't get any further, and make it tougher for Nurtio to do that terribly scary uh, spine crawler broodlord push. Oh, it's terribly scary, it's, all right, it's, man. It's, it's a scary <laughs> I've seen the sequel to singing. that. I've seen the sequel to that, which is spine crawlers and festers and broodlords. That was also that was also a terrifying movie. Uh, Naniwa is you know trying to scatter around, see if his opponent's expanding more over across the map. Nothing really going on in that regard. So Naniwa says, okay, four base versus four base. Does that mean I have time to really mass up a big army? Nurtio in the meantime says, well, you know, if he doesn't attack, I don't have to do anything except mass up more Infestors, more Broodlords, and get up that unkillable army. He even has 83 drones, a little bit too much. He can even afford to make more Spire Callers. Yeah, and I mean, that, um, now, you know, the Broodlord spawning with these, the Infestor count that Nurtio's actually replenished himself up to. 
It's going to be a pretty scary timing. He's got 12, four Broodlords, not too many links. Uh, I'm really impressed with Nurture's ability to spend his money right now. Nani, while we've, every time we've been looking, he's over 500 minerals, um, which is just never a good thing to have. Maybe drop down, well, he's actually already completed his weapon upgrade. So at this stage, well, it looks like it's going to be a Templar Archives and a Stargate. He's going to start making his way up to those additional uh, tech routes. But here's the thing, while he's teching, Nurture is continuing to expand. Yeah, you know, Naniwa delayed this tech to make sure he just has some security. The fourth base is a very tough spot for Protoss to really hold because of the way Zergs can flank. Look at that beautiful kiting from uh, from Nurtio, able to really deal with this, the Zealot harass. Their Zealots are supposed to kill off this fifth base, but instead, uh, looks like they failed their mission. Yeah, th I mean, that was uh, great scouting as well from Nurtio. He had uh, a couple of units down there and managed to get visibility on those Zealots beforehand. But not you know, both players at this point kind of just sitting back we see the expansion going down from Naniwa. It's a lot of macro at this moment. Yes. Uh, now, Naniwa doesn't really have like a strong opportunity, window of opportunity to really push in and do massive damage. Especially since he spent, invested so much into the Mothership and Templar Archives, he would rather have the availability of getting them out than, uh, than just trying to fight Zerg head on. Meanwhile, we also see uh, Protoss transition into mass war prisons. At least two, maybe three. Incorporate some DT, some Zealots. We saw Rain do that quite often. He always goes for double DT into Zealot warpins. Uh, but yeah. Naniwa looks like he's gearing up into a very aggressive position, but he really wants to just stall for as much time as possible. Yeah, I think he's just you know trying to assert a little bit of map control here. You definitely don't want to push against this uh, army. You kind of just wait for Zerg to make a billion Broodlords, or wait for them to move their Broodlords to a wrong location. Like right now, these Broodlords going pretty high north. That would open up the avenue for Naniwa to attack. Seeing that, he might go for it. We're gonna see if the Stalkers decide to blink in. Nope, he's just going to poke, clean up these tumors. And I like that decision ultimately. Just wait for the big push. Once it happens, if you win, you kind of win the game, actually. Oh, Nurcio sees the Zealots. He wants to defend this fifth base. This one Zealot is having a field day here in the bottom right corner. And that's gonna draw some units away. But overall, uh, Naniwa knows that Nurcio won't really give up his center position. And this is like the, the stalemate that we always see on Daybreak as you see Naniwa starting to get uh, Dark Templars out into the field. The map is pretty split, and overall I, I feel like time is just going to make Nurcio unkillable, absolutely unkillable, because look at how many Broodlords he's morphing. Yeah, oh my goodness. The response here from Naniwa is a little bit late to Mass Brood. I mean, he's now dropping down his second and third Stargates uh, while Zealots are harassing this bottom base once again. Zerglings will come to clean this up likely before it's taken out. Ah, uh, yeah, the Naniwa trying to just harass this base, take it out, poke down the center. Oh, a little bit of an engagement in the middle, though. Fungal Growth's going to catch some of the Stalkers and two Colossi. These Broodlords are cleaning up a lot of units for absolute free and a nice victory here for Nergio. Yeah, that's a lot. That's a big costly trade. I mean, obviously, Naniwa would like to trade out some units so that we can, can improve his unit composition a little bit. Uh, but he, tra he, he traded a lot, about 20, 30 supply worth of units. And Nergio sees that as the time to trade. He's got 20 Broodlords. What can Naniwa do against this giant blink under the Broodlords? But this is a tall order for any Protoss army to handle. Absolutely, it is. He's trying to focus them down, but the reality is that the Stalkers could not get unclumped. So many fungal growths trapping them in place, and we still have 13 Broodlords left in the battle oh, for Nergio. Banelings with plus three are rolling into the scene. Naniwa has to evacuate this fourth base. The center push is too strong, considering that, again, like you said, Gibbles, that there's a creep highway preventing Naniwa from moving in too aggressively. And the mothership is not even out. Nurtio already able to take such an ag aggressive posture, and Naniwa can't dislodge him from it. You know, it's, well, it goes back to earlier. Uh, man, uh, you know, the plus one is just now finishing for air weapons, but Nurtio has already attacked. And I mean, Nurtio attacked because he caught the Colossi and the Stalkers, but the reality is, all of this is so late for Naniwa. The mothership now still another 20 seconds away from being done at 26 minutes in a tough spot for our Swedish Protoss. Nurture doing the right, or sorry, uh, Naniwa doing the right thing, sending Dark Templars. He sniped the bottom right base, now trying to work onto the, the, the conventional third base. Uh, but, I mean, Naniwa's got bigger issues. He's got Brulor's Banelings and Infestors just waddling down on his existing income. Naniwa's pretty much mined out his main that is natural. He's on uh, basically half a half base economy. He can't really remake the amount of forces that he normally would like to. And Nurcio's got everything under control. And I mean, Nurcio has to completely clump up everything for Naniwa to have a chance at comeback. Yeah, you know, a small victory for Naniwa. He did manage to pick off the expansion down towards the bottom of the map. But overall, I'm, I'm actually surprised that Nurcio is bringing everything home here. Um, he's maxed out, he's got a nice bank, but 
this does make enough sense, you know. If the engagement somehow, Queen does get sniped, by the way. Nice move there for Naniwa. Uh, but make sure you have a big enough bank so that if somehow all of your stuff gets caught and a vor you know, all your Broodlords get Vortex and you lose everything, you can actually still remake your army this way. Oh my god, that is so many Banelings. <laughs> <laughs> and the Banes don't even have speed! Yeah. This is like the slowest moving devastating army I've ever seen. And, uh, I mean, Nurchio is moving up the <laughs> ramp, but he's kind of not realizing he doesn't re necessarily have to unless he has the perfect engagement. But now he was committing so much of his resources to Zell run by because Zells are nothing against this army as the paintings will completely destroy them. Here comes the Brulos. We have enough energy for one Vortex, but here is the preemptive split. Only about a one third of the Brulos get caught, and the Banes can even go into the Vortex and immediately devastate everything. The Stalker count is dwindling. Naniwa's supply is below triple digits, and Nurchio with a strong showing game number one. GG. Well, Nurchio, feeling calm as always, it seems. Which, you know, you talked about his nerves, man, but they did not show in that game. He played a crisp, clean series and just waited. No, Naniwa absolutely. to make a mistake, and uh, I'm really anxious to, yeah, Naniwa, uh, you can just see the disappointment on his face. I mean, he was holding that game fantastic. Nurchio is a player, he can just kill you in the mid-game, he really can. And, uh, he can kill you anytime he yeah. wants to. Nurchio is, uh, is a man of many builds. Uh, you know, I, I, I agree with what you said, you know, you can see that Nurchio is pretty much settled in, and it's always been the case where he makes awesome loser bracket runs. And always makes it a little bit tough for himself, not necessarily advancing too far. We did see Nurchio take down Dreamhack Bucharest in really dominating fashion. And that's kind of the Nurchio everyone's come to expect. Uh, but overall, it's just really, again, it's unfortunate. It just speaks to the caliber of this uh, tournament yeah. that Naniwa and Nurchio have to meet this early on. 72 players of death uh, is really what we've got going on here. And two of them are going up against each other, facing elimination. Nurchio currently up one to zip against Naniwa. And I, I got to say, man, I didn't expect that. Um, I really felt Nani was going to come out here with a strong showing. I was talking with him last night, and he seemed to feel oh, yeah. pretty good. But, uh, you know, we're going to have to see. We'll move into game two shortly. But Daybreak's a pretty even map. And, I mean, actually, that game was, it was really close for a lot of the game. It was both players playing very well. It was just uh, that one hiccup. I feel like uh, Naniwa definitely had, uh, you know, windows where he can really do a lot of damage. I feel like he had the right ideas. You know, he, he was making the right decisions, I think, Overall, though, Naniwa, he just, he didn't do enough. You know, he was, he was trying to seize the moment, and he was not able to get enough. Just look at that push out to that fourth base. But Nurchio had that fourth for so long, and under normal circumstances, Nurchio should not have that much availability of units and gas and larva. But because Nurchio was able to sneak that in while feigning a lot of pressure, yeah. it was a great move by a Zerg player, and as a result, what can a Protoss do from there? Hey, you know, a lot of times you hear it, actually. Uh, players will be like, oh, he's behind right now, because Nurchio was behind a little bit in the early game. Um, and they're like, oh, he should double expand. And a lot of times when I hear that, or even when I say it, I'm like, every time the person double expands, it gets seen and they lose. But here's actually a perfect instance of where Nurchio went for the double expand and Naniwa actually didn't spot it. And consequently, I mean, Nurchio got, in a, uh, got himself back into a great position. That's right, uh, Nurchio knows how to climb himself back into uh, this game. Looks like.